I'm Ryan Milliken from Hardway Performance, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. I'm Demetri Miller with No Zone Diesel. This is Anthony Rings from XDP. This is Jaron Holder from Holder Down Performance. Corey Willis from TPI. I'm Drew with D&J Precision Machine. I'm Pinky. And you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. Diesel Podcast. You're listening to The Diesel Podcast. The Diesel Podcast. The one and only Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? excited to have you guys with us today. We're going to be talking about a subject we've never talked about on the podcast before, which is dirt drags. Our guest today is Blake Curlin. He's got a super clean LB7 Duramax. It's a regular cab, long bed. You guys that follow us on social media, you're going to see a picture of it. It's, it's a beautiful truck. But he's going to tell us about how he built it, what upgrades are done to it. It's It's got a stock bottom end, so he's trying to keep that alive you know, until he's ready for a built motor. But he uses the truck every day. Um, use it to daily drive, tow things, and then go have fun doing dirt drags. So he's going to tell us about that experience and how much fun he has with it and ways you can do that with your truck. Have fun and then also daily drive it. Before we get to the podcast, we want to thank two of our sponsors, PPI. They've got, some of that's really exciting is the half-ton diesel explosion and the manufacturers you know, putting diesel engines in their half-tons. They've hit the ground running with the 3-liter power stroke. And you guys, if you're interested in a half-ton diesel and you're leaning towards an F-150, these guys got some really cool stuff for you to bump up the power torque, but also work within the safe parameters of the truck. Make sure you go to ppi.com as well. They've got a whole new website, so they've updated it. It's got all the same great products, information, super easy to navigate. I know you guys are going to like uh, heading on over there, checking out what they're doing. And also, Dan's Diesel Performance. If you've got a Duramax, whether it's an LV7, LML, want more airflow, and a drop-in turbo you can do over the weekend, go to dansdieselperformance.com. They've got everything you'd need to make your Duramax run better, run cooler, make more power. And, uh, yeah, head on over there and check them out. All right, let's start talking about dirt drags and a really, really sweet LB7. Danny, how are you? How are you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, Patrick. If I was any better, I'd have to cancel my health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that one, man. I, uh, you're, you're telling me about our guest today and the topic, and you're the Duramax guy at the Diesel Podcast, man. So, I, uh, I'm pumped to be chatting with Blake today. Welcome on the podcast, Blake. We're we're glad to have you here. Hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Danny was was talking to me before the podcast. He's like, man, we got to chat with this guy. What, like, this is a whole topic we've never had on the podcast, and you know, guys are out there, you know, loving to compete with their trucks this way so we want to just start with the truck itself tell us what year what make you got what you got done to it so far okay yeah um well just give you a little background on it i bought this truck when i was 17 it's a 2001 uh regular cab long bed chevy duramax uh bought it with 165,000 on it she's got 230,000 on it now um it's got a fully built transmission and uh the guys at mall shop they've really taken great care of me on it uh, Owen, he, he's a hell of a trans builder, and he's really done a great job on the truck. He's always been there for me. Uh, it's got a Stealth 67 uh, Turbo from Duramax Tuner. Um, obviously, it has Duramax Tuner, ECM, and TCM tunes. Uh, it's got a Raptor lift pump, 45% over stock injectors, a 10 mil pump, uh, stroker pump, <clears throat> and then uh, it's got a 4 inch slammed lift kit, and just obviously a bunch of sporting mods. So, <laughs> pretty neat. Nice. Build. Nice. What kind of power is it making? Um, you know, I really haven't dynoed it. Um, according to Bob, he said it should be anywhere from 750 to 800. Uh, it's still on a stock bottom end, so I don't like to turn the wick up on it all the time. It's only like racing, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> Just send it, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Once you pops, we'll put a motor in. <laughs> now, as far as, as far as, like, daily driving it, do you you drive it, you know, ready to go on the highest tune setting or do you tone it down a little bit or um you know <laughs> i'm one of those guys it kind of all depends on how i'm feeling um if you ask anybody um i have a very right heavy right foot um, <laughs> i like to party i usually keep it on tune three or tune four on the street and yes i do drive it every day um but you know i live on a farm and uh you know i have cattle and my brother and I show cattle at the county fairs and my dad and I you know my dad said you know I don't care what you do with the truck you know uh, you're your own man you know it's your money but he said I don't ever want to see you build this truck to where you can't use it so you know that's kind of where I've always been with it 
So, yes, it, it does get its ass towed off probably three or four times a week. Um, I mean, you got to keep it practical, too, you know. That's the really cool part of of diesel trucks is you can, you know, turn it up, have some fun with it, do the upgrades like you've done, go have some fun, but then also hook a trailer to the back and use it for work or take it on a trip or, you know. Yep. Yep. Now, I know Danny's got Danny's got a list of really great questions about uh, some competitions you've been doing and one that you won. So I'm going to let him uh, I'm going to let him ask you these. So just last night, it looks like you were doing some dirt dragging. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we did. That was a, that was a damn good time. <laughs> Congratulations on winning the hot class. Can you tell us a little bit about your night last night? Yeah. Well, thanks, Danny. Um, me and a me and a couple good buddies. Um, we go to this event every year in Bowling Green. It's in Bowling Green, Missouri. Um, and Josh Graver and his crew put it on. They did a very nice job with it. And uh, there's a lot of tough high horsepower trucks. And um, there's a bunch of different classes. There was a stock street class, and then a hot street class, and a mod street class. And obviously, I was in the hot street. And uh, I mean, you know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I've, I've done it the dirt drags probably ten or twelve different times. And um, you know, just went out there and don't try to think about it too much. And uh, I mean, just send it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we went out there. I think there was 18 trucks in our class, and um, I mean, yeah, it went by pretty quick. A lot of things happen very quickly, and you got to just be ready for it. And you go these round, you go these round robins, and it's just one after another after another. Yeah. When, so where where I'm from here, we do 300 foot dirt drags typically. What I noticed, you guys were running 250. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, we were. So when you run your truck 250 feet, are you running four wheel high or are you running four wheel low? How are you running your setup? Um, well, the nice part about um, my truck, which I mean I don't like to brag about it, but it, it does you know make me proud how I got it set up. You know, with the four inch lift kit, um, you know Owen told me he said you know you get this on here. You can keep it slammed so you go to truck poles, dirt drags. You don't have to worry about messing with the torsion bars. So my truck's set up to where I can drive it there, and um, obviously I have second gear start. And, I mean, I just, with with the pre-stage and the stage and the, and the yellow bulb drop, you know, I get it in second gear and four high on the biggest tune, and I just get up on it as hard as I can so the brakes say no more and um, just try to cut a light and just pray everything else got your back you know <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome so what kind of tires did you run last night uh i run the tires that are actually i just run daily on my truck they're a set of 16 by 10 ions and then uh, the tires are 305 70 16 bfg at so and how many rounds do you think you ended up going last night Oh, I think there were, um, and you know, I don't remember off the top of my head, I think there were 24 trucks, and there were 12, 12 races for the first round, and um, obviously I won. I'd say I raced it every bit of eight times, and I only raced it seven. Well, then in the finals round, one of my really good buddies, um, well, I was racing him for first and second, and he jumped a little bit, and we ended up racing, and he beat me by just about as much as he jumped by. And him and I always got a rival, and the guy asked me, he said, hey, he said, that was your buddy, you won this. He said, would you like to go back and win it, you know, fair and square, or do you want to take the money? And I said, you know what? I said, I will race him, you know, man to man, fair and square, see what happens. So we were back there, we raced him again, and um, I cut a light almost perfect and um i ended up winning it but you know that's what makes it fun too that's awesome what uh what kind of truck does your does your buddy have is it another duramax are you racing a cummins or power stroke or yes he's got another duramax it's a 2003 uh semi cab short bed uh lb7 built trans uh same fuel setup i got 10 mil 45s uh he's running f369 um all sporting mods. It's a very, very healthy truck. 
Nice. That's always, like, we always have that one friend who, uh, you know, is, like, just as competitive as we are. And, like, you do an upgrade, they do an upgrade. And usually what ends up is a full-blown race truck between <laughs> the two friends, yeah, you know? Yeah, that, that, is, that is true. <laughs> Many a race, race truck build started that way. <laughs> so what kind of front-end work do you guys like to do to your trucks to keep them straight on the dirt? Um, well... Back when I was in high school, I mean, you guys know how it is. In high school, you know, money was always an issue. Um, I just ran a set of tie rods, please. Um, it, had a, it had stock keys in it, cranked all the way up. You know, I was into big wheels and tires, so I thought that was super cool. Well, then I got mature and thought, you know, I don't like the way this thing rides. So when I did the lift, I did, um, oh, shoot, now I can't remember the kryptonite tie rods. And um, I did the Pitman, Pitman Arm and Idler Arm Sports. And with the slammed lift, all my angles and everything are good. And I rebuilt the whole front end myself. I, I replaced them with new parts. And I've sent it that way for the last 30,000 miles. And I have not had an issue. That is very cool. Speaking of not having an issue, I saw on one of your posts that you gave a special shout out to Bob at Duramax Tuner for basically dialing in your truck, your 67.7, your 45s, and your 10 mil. Yes. And I just want to say I thought that was pretty cool that you gave a guy behind the scenes some credit where normally that isn't really um, given. And I just kind of wanted to talk a few things about what I've been noticing on forums lately. I see mm -hmm. a lot of people complaining about their tuner, a lot of people complaining about their tune, um, or just uh, performance in general out of uh, their truck. But when you work with somebody that actually takes the time to know and learn what turbo, what injectors, what pump you're running, what pumps you're running, and you actually get a tune custom built for your truck, that's where everything comes into play. Um, a lot of people, the biggest thing, when I worked at Duramax Tuner, a lot of people would be frustrated because they had to do tune updates. And a lot of people go right on to the forums and say, hey, this tune is a piece of crap and I need it fixed, you know, or who should I, who should I switch to or whatever. But what I noticed is a lot of times it's just lack of communication between you and your tuner. You have to mm -hmm. tell them I, you, exactly what the turbo is. You can't tell them, I think it's a 67.7. I think I have 45 overs. And I think I have a 10 mil. You can't assume anything like that because they're going to send you a file for exactly what you told them. Yes. No, I, I totally agree with that. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, that are behind the scenes that people are quick to blame on the tuning side. Um, I mean, it could be a, you know, a fuel filter issue. Uh, transmission spin on filter issue your trains is flaring they're quick to blame the TCM tune they're quick to blame the tuner you know um, to me personally uh, Nick Bob very very smart guys they've treated me awesome I have there's not enough good things I can say about them um, I mean they are awesome uh, anytime I ever need anything I always shoot Bob a text uh, I probably bug him you know I, I ask him questions all the time like hey what do you think about this what do you think about that you know we talk all the time um I think, you know, when you get to a certain horsepower range or when you get to a certain um, drivability range, as in if you're wanting to tow, you want to tow. If you want to race, you want to race. If you want to do it all. You really need to have that communication, and you almost need to, A, either have a dyno tune, or B, give Bob a call or someone at Duramax here and get it data logged or just drive up to Marengo and have Bob put the laptop in and drive around. I mean, it is insane what he can do. He he reads the tunes, what the truck wants. I mean, he's given everything the truck wants, you know. And when you get him dialed in like that, that separates you from first to second place, you know, first to third place, you know. And a lot of people, I feel like, don't quite understand the industry and quite understand how these trucks work. You know, they just expect everything right now. They expect... Um, everything to work right. These trucks, I mean, honestly, probably half these trucks are smarter than we are. I mean, the Allison's transmissions, I mean, they're just something else. The Duramax itself is something else. But at the end of the day, 
they don't have their own mind. They're, they're a machine, and they have issues. And everybody messes up. You know, I'm saying there couldn't be a issue in the tuning or this or that. But I feel like, you know, like you said, with communication, uh, small stuff could be resolved very, very easily. That is very, very true. I I appreciate your insight and being on your end of it, seeing it like that and under, having the understanding because people are just too quick to jump to, oh, possibly let's switch tuning companies. Every every time I uh, switch tuning company, companies, you're burning a license. You're burning a lot of uh, time and money to have to switch mm-hmm. that. And not to mention you're putting... Uh, your ECM at risk every time you try to flash it again. I feel, especially in LB7. Exactly, and people people don't people don't think that way, you know, and people don't don't see it that way, you know. And to me, <clears throat> you know, obviously I I know the risk I'm at with stop bottom end. Bob has warned me. I know that. You know what I mean? And at Duramax Junior, the thing I, I I really like what what Nick and everyone focuses on is drivability. I mean. I have driven other trucks that have had other tuning companies, and I mean, I'm telling you, you get in my truck, you know, whether it makes 750, 800, whatever, you know, being a little bit bigger single charger, you can go out and drive it like it was bone stock and you wouldn't be able to know that it was built until you step into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what are your future plans with the truck? Where are you going from here? Well, uh, I'm actually a junior at Western Illinois University, and uh, I've been selling seeds, full, well, it's a full-time job, but selling seeds part-time on the side from farming and doing a little bit of this, so probably going to save some cash up, and I'd really like to um, do an S484 over top to 67.7, um, probably a built bottom end, 100% in dual pumps. Um, I think that would be a very, very, very fun street truck, plus I would not be afraid to tow with it. Um, as far as motor goes, there's a lot of different options I could run. Um, and honestly, I haven't tried to think that far yet because that's a lot of dollar signs. Well, if you don't mind me asking, how much did you win last night? Um, it was a shy under three hundred bucks, so so can't beat that. Not bad. Entry fee was fifteen bucks, and had a buddy haul me over there. He raced the spoilers and flipped in some cash, and everyone's happy. Everyone had fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way to do it, you know. Make a that's right. Yeah, make some money back on it. Have some fun. Yep. That topic that you guys were talking about with with tuning, I just wanted to touch on something really quick because we, I think, what you said, Blake, is so key is that <clears throat> when you have a truck where it's not a full race truck and it's not a 400 horsepower daily driver, it's kind of right in the middle. And how do you get the tuning dialed in and all those sorts of things? That is what's so, I think, hard for the tuners because we all drive different. Like. I've had a couple different trucks and Bob tuned one of them and it was like a 530 horse truck and I didn't need any revisions. It was perfect on a Cummins. I, you know, with Ryan Milliken, you know, he would send me a file, made great power. I'm like, you know, I know I'm on borrowed time. It's going to be, you know, I, I know every time I go full throttle, there's like a certain number of full throttle runs I have till there's oil and, you know, probably the crank and rods at the, <laughs> underneath it. <laughs> And it's like, yeah. how do, let's dial in the daily driving side of it. And that is so key. And I think with guys, you know, they listen to this podcast and they want to do what you're doing, make that kind of power is that drivability and telling the, the company or the tuner, hey, you know what, it's 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 not getting on top of the charger quick enough or it's fueling too hard. I, I don't drive it, you know, with more than 13%, 13% throttle most of the time or whatever it might be. They can really dial in that tuning for you. I think it's very important to really also talk about ECM tuning versus TCM tuning. I had a ton of people in my life try to mix and match different tuning companies. One one person, one company is doing the ECM tuning and another company is doing the TCM tuning. If mm. you're going to do it, do it all with one company. That way everything matches. Everything is the way that they want. So that way if something does go wrong, the tuners aren't pointing their fingers at each other saying, hey, what the heck's going on? It's his fault. Exactly. I, I totally agree. And uh, I'll just touch on this real quick. Um, back in the day when I was in high school, I had a trans built, 
and um, come find out the trans that I had built was not actually built, and I got taken for, you know, five grand. But, um, Ooh. Took, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty salty about that still. But took my truck to um, Mall Shop in Jacksonville, and, um, you know, Owen told me the bad news, and we split apart, and he built it to the gills. And I tell you, I haven't had any issues with it since. And Bob built me one hell of a one hell of a trans tune, and um, it it hadn't let me down yet. It it doesn't get hot, doesn't do anything like it used to. It bangs gears. I mean, she likes it. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it. Well, you got to be accurate with exactly what you have on your truck. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. Exactly. And how can we follow you on Instagram or Facebook? Oh, shoot. I mean, you can just add me on there, you know. Facebook, obviously, is my first and last name. And then Instagram, uh, to be completely honest with you, I couldn't tell you my name. I'd have to look. Uh, I made that when I was so damn young. I, I'd have to look for you. <laughs> we'll make sure and tag you, we'll tag you, Blake. So, guys, that when we post it up, see, uh, you know, those future plans you got, what uh, – what uh, what you're able to do with it and, and follow you yeah yep yep no we'll definitely stay in touch um and i just appreciate you guys having me on here and we really enjoyed chatting with you and uh we're we're excited man we're, we're excited to see where you take this truck and those lb7s are popular you know there a lot of guys are doing stuff with them so we keep our fingers crossed for that bottom end you don't have to buy that built motor till you're ready that's right <laughs> that's right <laughs> Right on, man. Thanks again, Blake. Yep, thank you. Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to ppi.com if you're looking for custom tuning for your truck, whether it's Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, or a half-ton diesel. They've got it. Also, go to dansdieselperformance.com. Check out the drop-in turbos that Dan's has for your LB7, LLY, LBZ, LMM, LML. They've got it all, and most of these are in stock ready to go, so you don't have to wait long. All right, guys, Till next time, keep the shiny side up.